Once you've painted your miniature, you could varnish it, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is basically just for protection. Uh, when you've got it on your table and you, you, you're gaming with it, it will get wear and tear, especially around the base. Touch it a lot and it just falls over and ends up on the floor and whatnot. So you might want to protect it using a varnish. The other is to get the same finish all over the miniature. Paints have different finishes, like a wash could be more shiny. Uh, contrast paint is usually a bit more shiny, whereas these sort of Vallejo uh, model color paints are kind of matte. The thing is, I want my miniatures to be matte. I really like the look of a matte varnish, uh, especially on these ghostly fellas, the, uh, the night haunt. And it's proven pretty difficult to find a matte varnish that is actually matte. So that's led me to try this stuff here, which is from Windsor and Newton. They make um, a lot of oil paints, brushes, things like that for people who can actually paint for a real, like paint a painting and stuff. And this is their matte varnish. It's, it's actually, it says here, protects oil and acrylic paintings. So it's made to, like you paint an oil painting and you can protect it with this, this varnish. And this supposedly is very matte. A disclaimer right away is I don't have proof of how well this works to actually sort of protect your miniature from wear and tear. At this stage I'm just after the matte finish, so time will tell. But I wanted to make a comparison. So I've got four miniatures here. Oh, they're all from my Shane Rass Poured uh, Small Fellows. They all painted at the same time, same paints, all of that. I'm keeping one as an original, just so we can compare. And I'm going to do one with the, the Windsor & Newton spray. And then I've got a matte varnish from v Vallejo, which is going on one of them. It's a water-based matte varnish. And then just because I had it lying around, because I wasn't, I'm, I'm not going to go out and buy like 10 different matte varnishes just to try for your sake. I'm not that rich. Um, sorry. But I got this Humbrol. It's an enamel matte varnish. So we'll start with the, with the Vallejo matte varnish. So you can see this one says Val for Vallejo. And I'll just slobber this on. Supposedly there's a, there's a varnish out there called Testa's Dull Coat, which, which is supposed to be really matte. Uh, I just can't get a hold of it at all. Uh, I'm, I'd be surprised if there's a single bottle in Sweden, um, where I'm from. And um, I'm not sure why, it's, it's something to do with uh, what they use as a propellant and uh, European Union regulations and custom things and I don't know. But it's difficult to get a hold of. Whereas this stuff, um, I've, I've found in several places that sort of craft stores or, you know, uh, paint supply stores. I'm limited to things that I can use either in a spray can or with a brush. I'm not sure what the options look like look like if you have a um, if you have an airbrush. So with 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 enamel paints, um, obviously, you probably know this. I'll, I'll say anyway, they're obviously not uh, water based, um, so you can't clean your brush with water when you're done. I actually got some here, white spirit, and then after that you can clean your brush with like a soap or something to clean out the white spirit. I gave it a good stir for about five minutes. Looking at the pot, like around the edges, it's looking a bit yellow. This this is probably about five years old. Does that mean this will all end up yellow in about another five years? I don't know. Now when varnishing for, for sort of protection purposes, the most important thing, I guess, is around the base, the edges of the base and wherever you would sort of normally touch the model a lot of times. Now with the, uh, with the spray, the Winsor Newton spray, I've got to admit, I did a bit of a cooking show kind of a thing. But I prepared something earlier. Basically, weather's been awful, and a couple of days ago it was better. Now it's raining, and I don't recommend spray painting anything, be it color or be it varnish, in unsuitable weather. Like it should be dry, not raining, normal temperatures and stuff like that. You can usually read it on the back here, whatever they say, but avoid like wet, rainy weather. The Vallejo is still drying and the Humbrol is still drying. So I'm going to leave these for, I don't know, four or five hours just to make sure that they're pretty dry. And then, and then we'll have a look. So I set my alarm for six hours before and that was hours ago. It, this thing beeped, so it's probably been eight hours. 
even if the varnishes haven't fully hardened, at least they should be dry and have the finish that they would have. This is the spray, the Winsor & Newton spray. Now with the, the lights that I've got shining on this, it does give it a bit of a glare. But to the eye, this is as matte as... I don't think an, anything could be more matte. There's nothing shiny going on here. Almost to the extent that I wish maybe that the metallic weapon would be a bit shinier. With the lights and the camera, it, it looks a little bit glossy, but it's not, I promise you, there's no gloss going. Maybe if we compare to... This is the original. So without, without a varnish. So you can see that's a lot more shiny. Now next up is the, this is the Vallejo, the matte varnish from Vallejo. This is actually shinier, at least to the eye, probably in the camera as well. This is actually shinier than the original. So the Vallejo matte varnish is shinier than not having any varnish. And then lastly, it's the Humbrol, which is uh, pretty much as, it's a little bit less shiny than the Vallejo, but it's also sort of, uh, it's not very even. And the miniature itself is a little bit more yellow. So it's probably not fair using a five-year-old bottle of varnish, but it's a little bit more matte than the original, but it's still, it's still shiny. So that was my sort of very uh, laboratory great experiment, uh, not, not very scientific. I got to say that I know it's a bit shiny in the camera, um, but to the eye, this stuff, this is matte. I, I, I don't know how, if anything could be more matte. And that's what I was looking for. Like I, especially these night haunt, I want them to be matte. And I don't, I don't want the sort of wherever the wash is puddled up to be shiny and this and that. I'm gonna wait for a good day to to varnish and I'll probably varnish my entire army with this stuff. This is matte. Just one last thing to say about varnish that I didn't mention before. Like if you matte varnish something like this, as an effect you can use probably a glossy varnish. Like if there's, if you want something to look wet, if you want something to look slimy. Um, I'm thinking because the Vallejo matte varnish wasn't really matte, it was a bit glossy, but the, the weapon here looks pretty nice like the metal. So I might try and put some of that on, on top of the axe this fellow's got. A little bit more of a metallic shine going. So you can use a varnish to sort of get that kind of effects as well. That was just a side note. Thumbs up for Winsor & Newton's professional matte varnish. Please like and subscribe if you wish. Makes me happy. And uh, thanks for watching.